welcome to another exciting edition of History's News, where we bring you the facts straight from the past. I'm your host, Bob Bubba-da-boo-boo, and today we are taking you back to the year 1776, July 4th, to be precise, Philadelphia. We have a reporter out there in the field. His name is John Johnson. John, it's lovely to have you back. Can you tell us what's going on there in Philadelphia? Hi, Bob. Yeah, I am here on the streets of Philadelphia. The date is July 4th, 1776, and I am standing outside the building that will come to be known as Independence Hall. Because just a few hours ago, members of the Second Continental Congress voted and declared independence from British rule. That includes Parliament and King George. They decided enough was enough. So members of the Congress over the next few weeks will get together and start writing the Declaration of Independence, signing it, and then sending it over to King George. Now this document will come to be known as one of the most famous breakup letters in the history of the world. Wow, a breakup letter. That's a really creative way to think about that there, John. I remember the last time I got a breakup letter was 1973 from my wife, Susie, after I repeatedly refused to cut my toenails. You should always clip your toenails, Bob. Anyway, tell us how we got here, John. What made the colonists want to break from British rule? Wow, that's actually a great question, Bob. So this is not something that happened overnight. This is something that has been building for years and years and years, decades even. The colonies felt continually disrespected by King George and Parliament. They thought that they were unfairly taxed, you know, taxation without representation. They felt that they were not treated fairly in the eyes of the British government. So even though this is an extremely risky move for the colonies, they decided it would be better off to have their own government to take a chance rather than be ruled by our government thousands of miles across the sea. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a good point, John, about the British being ac across the sea. Uh, here's a question for you. Uh, did they ever consider talking to, to Ariel, or, or Sebastian, or maybe even Flounder, and, and going under the sea? Uh, you know, because apparently everything is better uh, down where it's wetter. I don't think that was on the table, Bob. Well, I think that's something they should have explored, to be honest, but hey. I'm an outside-the-box thinker, you know? Anyways, how did we get here, John? Continue with our story about the colonists getting a little bit frustrated with British rule. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky question, Bob, because like I said, it's not just one reason that got us to this moment. There are several reasons built up over years and years and years. But I think it started back in 1763 at the end of the French and Indian War. Now, this was a war fought on colonial soil by the British against the French. The British eventually won this war, but it was extremely costly. It cost them a ton of money. So after this point, the British and Parliament started taxing the colonials to pay for this expensive war. And that led to a lot of frustration among the colonials. You know, John, I'm not a doctor, but unfair taxes sound unfair. Oh, they were, Bob. But the colonies still dealt with them for years. The next big event happened in 1770 in Boston, Massachusetts, where a group of British soldiers fired into a crowd, killing civilians. This event was known as the Boston Massacre, and it really started to turn the public's view of the British soldiers. If they thought that they could fire on them and kill them without any real consequences, people got really angry about that. And now we're still six years away from where I stand right now. No, nothing. No, no questions. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep, keep going. Next came more taxes on goods the colonists used every day, like stamps and tea. The Tea Act was one that really upset the colonists so much so that a group of peak colonists called the Sons of Liberty dressed up as Native American and boarded ships in Boston Harbor that belonged to the East India Trading Company, which was a company that was controlled by the British. They dumped over 300 chests of tea, equaling in today's dollars about $1.7 million worth of tea. That is a lot of cheddar. Yeah, you're not kidding, Bob. After this, King George and Parliament were so upset they passed 
super harsh laws called the Coercive Acts. The colonists thought they were so harsh, they called them the Intolerable Acts. Among other things, this shut down Boston Harbor and put a bunch more soldiers into the city of Boston, further increasing the tensions between the colonists and British soldiers. Things were about to explode at this point. Tensions were now extremely high. You know, now I can really see both sides to this. Yeah, I guess if you look really hard, you can see both sides. But, but at this point, tensions were extremely high, and it was only a matter of time before the fighting happened. The first battle happened at Lexington and Concord in 1775, followed closely by Bunker Hill. There was another meeting of Congress to try and smooth things over with King George and Parliament in the form of an olive branch petition, but King George said, no thank you. And now we are here at this moment, a declaration of independence, a declaration of war. Wow, that was fantastic. Oh, what a masterpiece. Wow, <laughs> you know, thanks, Bob. What? Uh, you know, that, that really means a lot. Uh, well, well, you're welcome there, John. You know, uh, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, keep, keep it up, you know, one day you can be as important as me. You know, I just want to say that uh, I've been here a little bit and I was wondering... Well, that's all the time we have for today, everybody. Thank you for joining us again on History's News. We'll see you next time as we dive into the facts straight from the past. I'm your host, Bob Bubba Boo. Good night.